Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up today I have another classic Backman British Diesel. Among Backman's spring 2021 announcements was an all new Class 20. And I love the Class 20, it's definitely one of my favourite classes of British diesel. But it was a strange one for me. I was really, really surprised to see the Class 20 retooled by Backman because they already have a Class 20 in their range. Here is one right now. They're still available from most places. They've been produced up until quite recently. So I'm really interested to learn what have Backman got in store for us with their brand new Class 20. Well, to try and figure it out, I have one of the existing class 20s uh, and this is in the lovely sort of br green as you can tell absolutely love the look of this can't wait to see this i love the class 20 but i've only ever owned an old sort of well two old lima ones this will be the first somewhat modern class 20 i've ever owned i say it's somewhat modern the earliest reference i can find to this tooling version of the model is 2003 so yeah it's reasonably old but still not quite 20 years old again quite surprising that backman have chosen to retool this and look at it it looks for all intents and purposes modern doesn't it anyway so the rrp for the version i have here was 140 pounds and i bought this from the model center or tmc for 87 pounds which is a considerable discount look at this though this is the new backman class 20 the newly toured one much higher rrp of 179 pounds 95 and the various retailers are going to be selling it at just above the 150 pound mark so the new version is going to be between 40 and 65 pounds more expensive than this version so it's just an interesting situation isn't it so today we're going to familiarize ourselves with the existing class 20 figure out what it does well and also try to figure out what it doesn't do quite so well to try and imagine what backman might be doing with the new class 20 okay let's do it so the fact that this model dates back nearly 20 years is not at all obvious from the outside of the box, is it? Looking through the front of the window, it doesn't look dated. I would have no trouble believing that this was a new tooled Class 20. Looks absolutely fine. I suppose when I get the thing out, we might be able to see some signs that the model is getting a bit dated. But either way, it's interesting that Backman have chosen to retool this. And of course, we've seen quite a bit of this in 2021 already. You know, a manufacturer going back and revisiting their older range and trying to bring it into this decade i suppose hornby did the same with their 9f and their p2 really looking forward to those yeah it's not a bad idea is it it does mean that we don't get to see sort of new models new things represented in double o gauge but there's a fair bit of that going on as well so no complaints overall let me show you the end of the box then this is the version i went for it's 32-027b it is a class 20 and it is number d8011 br green with the indicator discs and as you can see it also has the 21 pin dcc decoder socket which again is relatively modern isn't it i believe these just had the eight pin sockets when they were new or i think they were new in 2003 that's the earliest reference i can find to these okay let me show you the back of the box so there you go brief history of the class 20 go ahead and read that if you'd like to feel free to pause and whatnot however i will tell you a little bit about the class later on come on then i'm desperate to know what is this going to be like is it going to impress me is it going to be up to modern standards i've no idea you'd think not you'd think not if backman have chosen to retool it but then again maybe there are just some details that this older version doesn't represent properly maybe it's an accuracy thing as opposed to sort of a quality and features thing i really don't know but let's find out let's see what this one is like let's pull it out how does it feel it feels pretty heavy for a loco of this size and already i can tell it's quite a lot heavier than the old lima version which interestingly enough is now the hornby version with an updated mechanism okay so i have here what looks like an exploded diagram and it does actually show you a bit about the guts of the loco so you can see we've got a nice large motor it looks like it's got flywheels fitted to it both of the bogies appear to be driven. That's really quite nice, isn't it? That looks, again, modern. On the back, Class 20 Bobo locomotive. What's all this about? Uh, looks like a lot of it is body removal. Uh, the head code discs, which is an interesting feature, isn't it? Dating back to the steam era. Quite interesting that we've got those fitted to the model. Well, not fitted to the model, supplied with the model, I should say. And then we've got this, Product Maintenance and Care. This is a more recently printed article, isn't it? But yeah, that is just the more basic stuff. It's probably not even specific to this locomotive but that is fair enough right come on then let's find out what this is like so looking through the top yep you can see all of those head code discs and a lot more besides so let's take a quick look see what we get inside here although i'm sure the instructions will have told us in more detail but let's take a look anyway 
All right, so looks like we've got, I can see a ladder inside there, various buffer beam fittings, such as the vacuum pipes and such. Yep, the head code discs, quite a few other bits and pieces inside there as well. So yeah, quite a bit of, of work to do if you want to detail up the model. But of course, some of those uh, features, such as the head code discs, are sort of designed to be customized, aren't they? So it wouldn't make any sense to fit those as new. Right, ooh, look at this. Wow, that is a strange sort of, almost, not, not khaki, but it's almost like a, a greeny gray on the top and on the sole bar there. That's a weird color, isn't it? And then of course, you turn it onto its sides a bit and you can see the more traditional BR green. All right, come on then, let's pull this one out, see what this is like. Core. Cool. You know, this is not a large diesel, and yet it is pretty hefty, I must say. Uh, the sort of sole bar and the bodywork is all made of plastic, as you'd probably expect. But no, it doesn't feel too light, really, for a locomotive of its size. And to be honest, it looks really, really good, doesn't it? There's obviously an awful lot of detail on this. I don't know whether these would have been as detailed as this when they were first sort of announced and released back in 2003. Surely this will have seen some upgrades since then. I can't imagine a loco this detailed being produced back in 2003. 2003. But then again, as you know, I tend to just look at the sort of quality and the detail levels. I don't tend to pry too much into the sort of accuracy and the realism of models. So that could be where this older model falls down. If that's the case, do let me know down in the comments. But for now, let's have a history on the Class 20 and then we'll take a closer look at this Class 20 and figure out uh, the ins and outs of it, I think. All right, should be fun. Also known as the English Electric Type 1, the Class 20 was a fleet of 228 locomotives constructed between 1957 and 1968 by English Electric. Weighing in at just 73 tonnes, the class was so numerous because it was one of the first diesel designs in its power range to be deemed successful. Now, given their size, the stats were reasonably impressive. They boasted a top speed of 75 miles per hour and a power output of 750 kilowatts, although, of course, they were often double-headed. It's very, very normal to see Class 20s double-headed uh, in order to haul the larger trains, of course. Now, while it wasn't unheard of, the Class 20 did not usually haul passenger trains and they were instead used for mixed freight. Interestingly, as we found out, the class did use steam era disc indicators prior to the introduction of head codes in 1960, although I think they were modified to incorporate head codes after that happened. So they are kind of like a classic transitional locomotive, aren't they, between the days of steam and the days of diesel. Most remaining members of the class are now in preservation. I think that's 22, actually, which is quite a good number. Six of them do remain in service, though, although the rest of the class were withdrawn from 1976 onwards. Okay, so under closer inspection, Backman's decision to retool the Class 20 is starting to make a lot more sense because up close, yes, it is starting to show its age a little bit. However, I must give Backman some credit because they really nearly had me fooled with this one. From any sort of distance, this looks passable as a modern super detailed locomotive. And I think that is in no small part due to the livery, which looks absolutely fantastic and is no doubt much more modern and refined than this model would have been back in say 2000. 2003 or whatnot, but more on that in a little while. But as I say, this is now starting to show its age. For the most part, a lot of the detailing is quite chunky and coarse. For example, the lamp irons, yeah, you can see those look a lot more chunky than they would on a modern release. Uh, the wipers around the cab area, you can just tell how thick and plasticky those look. Yeah, they are showing their age a little bit as well. You've got quite a lot of molded details. So all of the grills, for example, on the side here are just part of the molding. They're not etched or anything like that. I think the larger grills on the the cooling fans on the top those appear to be separately fitted which maybe allows for some different variations i don't know but either way they are just made of plastic and there's no detail behind them or anything and the same thing goes with the grill up on top there's no representation of a fan underneath there or anything you can just literally see down onto the chassis which obviously isn't ultra realistic and also it's little details like the lights for example they look all right from a distance i suppose but it's fairly clear to see that those are not actual lights i don't think this model has any lights at all maybe it's got some lights in the cab I guess we'll find out later on but as for head and tail lights nope absolutely not nothing like that I mean that is definitely a big indicator that this is an older locomotive however it's not all bad is it this really does a good job in fact a much better job than let's say the Lima class 20 or now the Hornby one in capturing the prototype I mean the weight is pretty good that's a big pro this weighs in at 393 grams which is actually heavier than a Hornby A3 which is a huge Pacific the weight isn't too bad it's only 30 grams lighter than 
the Dapo 73, which is obviously a much larger locomotive. Yeah, the weight has impressed me quite a lot, despite the locomotive not having very much visible metalwork. As I say, all of the visible body is just made of plastic, although there must be a fairly heavy chassis block on the inside to bring up that weight. The decoration then, that is another huge plus with this locomotive. I mean, look at the tampo printed details. You've got the British Railways crest, that is absolutely fine. What could be a builder's plate on the sort of sole bar there? Hopefully I can get a good close up on that. You've got the high voltage warning signs, all of the door handles, well, they're not separately fitted or anything. They are picked out nicely. The bogey detail is nicely picked out. That all looks fantastic. And you've got a number of much smaller prints, which are all done to a really, really high standard. So yes, the decoration is fantastic and you can't really see any joins between the two shades of green either, or indeed the yellow on the ends. Yeah, it's really painted quite carefully and nicely, which is good. I also really like these fine sort of chrome finished handrails. I think they look wonderful. Thank goodness they're not just molded or anything. And there's quite a few chrome finished parts, as you can see, mostly handrails, but there's some other bits on the running plate as well. And around the doors in the cab, as you can see, we've got nice high shine chrome handrails, all separately fitted. That's really, really decent. Look at the buffers. Now, these look like they're just unspeakable sprung plastic buffers. Well, they are plastic, and I suppose that would be something to be improved on a new Class 20, but they are sprung. Look at this, 2003. Were these sprung buffers back in 2003? I don't know. It's not a big deal, but I just thought that given how basic other aspects of the model are, I was quite surprised to see sprung buffers on there. And as I've already said, the bogey detail itself is quite nice. You've got quite a few separately fitted parts, including the steps underneath the cab. And as you can see, all of the springs and the axle boxes, they're all clearly molded in, which is really nice. The cab isn't too bad either. As you can see, we've got flush glazing fitted all around, which looks decent. I can't see very much in the way of painted detail inside, but the interior does have that cream finish as opposed to the unpainted dull plastic, which just helps the thing to look a bit more realistic. No crew or anything involved with this model. That's a bit of a pity. I thought that's something Backman did back in this era, but sadly not with this example. And actually, I think a little bit of crew inside there would have helped to make the cab a little bit more convincing. But overall, yeah, I mean, it's... Is it worth £140 RRP from Bankman? No, I don't think so. As usual, they're having a laugh with that. At the price I paid from TMC, £87.47 to be exact. I think that's much more like it. It is expensive, but you seem to get what you pay for in terms of the quality, because as you will notice, as we've been looking at this thing, not a single piece seems to be off kilter. The decoration is done with great precision, and there's certainly nothing dropping off it or anything like that. And don't forget the inclusion of those head code discs and the extra details are a really, really nice nice touch and of course you could make your locomotive much more convincing if you decided to use those. So yeah, I mean you have to consider that this is an older model and it does show. However, if you can pick up one of the older class 20s at the right price, which should get easier and easier now that Backman have announced a brand new one, then sure. If you're not too bothered about absolute detail and you want a locomotive that looks pretty decent, then sure, yeah, this is a good option, provided of course the mechanism is good. And generally speaking, diesels produced by Backman around this era are really really decent i will check that out and find out for sure and then i'll come back to you down on the track and we'll give this thing its first ever test please let this be such a good runner as the class 37 or perhaps the peak they were amazing if this can match those in terms of performance i'll be a very very happy chappy so there she is then, the Backman Class 20, down onto the track looking pretty good i would say so the level of detail was meh wasn't it the mechanism, though, is absolutely wonderful. I'm really, really impressed with this, to the point where I hope they haven't done away with this mechanism, with this chassis, on the newly tooled Class 20s, because it really is that good. So, first of all, you have all-wheel drive, as you would obviously expect, but in 2003 that wasn't a given. Well, no, this loco does have all-wheel drive, so that's great. You also have all-wheel pickup by means of these copper wipers, which touch the back of the wheels. That's really, really decent. I don't have to remove the base keeper plates to reveal the those proper bearings fitted to each axle. That's a really, really nice touch. We've got NEM couplings fitted to the base keeper plates as well, so that's pretty good. You can interchange the couplings if you like. Body removal was really, really easy. Just two screws and the body comes off without any sticking or anything like that. So that was really, really good. The chassis is absolutely lovely. Look how neat and tidy this is. You've got this really chunky motor, which does have the front of the windings visible, which means I could count the poles. It is a five pole motor, which is marvelous. And it also has a flywheel fitted to each end as we saw on the instructions. So that's fantastic. And you've also got the 21 pin DCC decoder socket, easy access to that. And there's also even space 
space for a speaker over on the other side there. I mean, it's just really, really packed full of features. The gauge is absolutely fine. I measured a back to back of 14.5 millimeters, which is within 0.1 millimeters of the standard. And the front to back was 100% spot on, which is amazing. Yeah, this is a really, really lovely mechanism, an excellent chassis. It will be a, a crying shame if they've gotten rid of this on the new tooled class 20. Obviously it will need to be altered. They'll need to find a way to fit lights to the chassis obviously and maybe change the bogey details for more modern ones. But yeah, the chassis itself is fantastic. How does it run though? I have absolutely no idea. It hasn't been run in yet. It hasn't even been run at all yet. So this might not be at its best. I think the loco should get even better once the motor has run in. But straight out of the box, let's try a crawl and see how this runs. Here we go, turning it up. I'm expecting great things. Turning up, turning up, turning up. Okay. So it kicked in at a reasonably high speed, but as you can see, oh, it's pretty smooth. This is not performing like the old Lima ones, that's for sure. <laughs> Look at that. That is pretty smooth. Ooh. Bit of a growl to it, though. That's strange. I was also in two minds, you know, as to which way to put this on the track. I mean, technically I would say this bonnet end is the front, but they tended to run with the cabs facing outwards. So we will call the cab end the front today, but don't bother correcting me because I know there's some, yeah, there's an argument to be made for both. That's a weird noise though. It's not so bad in that direction, but what we are calling forwards is a little bit grumpy sounding, isn't it? Ooh, so I don't know, maybe we have found the crack in the in the old chassis then yeah maybe that is why they're going to be retooling it as well i don't know maybe i can't imagine it's anything serious because it seems to be running nicely it's just a weird grinding isn't it interesting i'm holding it which i shouldn't be doing actually it only makes the noise as the thing moves which suggests that it is just something vibrating rather than something wrong. So that's all right. How's the speed then? 50% speed. Yeah, that's not too fast, is it? That's really, really controlled, which suggests competent gearing. That's really good. Okay, let's now do some slow speed testing. Are you ready? Let's see. Okay. So at the moment, the slow speed isn't absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's a little bit juddery, isn't it? But maybe that will get better with running in. Are we getting any flywheel support? Let's bring it into shot and uh, cut it off. Are you ready? Mm, nope, stopping dead by the looks of it. Anyway, let's get this run in. Hopefully the performance will improve. It's not bad, but it's not fantastic, is it? There's definitely room for some improvement. So let's get it going around the track and see how it handles itself. Yeah. That noise is really weird because the chassis looked like it was a really quality one. And I think it probably is, but something is definitely vibrating there. I don't know what. I didn't actually touch the mechanism at all with this. I mean, usually when I've removed the base keeper plates, I might suspect that I've put something back on wrong. But all I've done this time is take the body off, so I know it's definitely nothing I've done. Maybe I'll just let it run in. It's obviously not struggling. There's nothing seriously wrong. Uh, so yeah, maybe it'll just go away as the loco runs in. I'll talk to you again very shortly then with some news on that. And hopefully this baby will be running quite a lot better when I come back. Right, fingers crossed then, we will see. Okay, folks, there we have it. Running in has concluded. And that went absolutely fine. I didn't notice any slowing down on any of the curves. It ran perfectly happily for the full sort of 45 minutes without any issues. It wasn't ever noisy in the sort of backward direction. Is it noisy forward still? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Perhaps not quite as bad as it was, but it's still a little bit growly. Yeah, not sure about that then. It's a bit off-putting, isn't it? Anyway, how is the crawl? Is the crawl any better? Let's find out. Oh, little jump there, turn it up a bit more. Okay, so no, it's not particularly smooth. Let's go a bit further. Aha, there we go. So once it jumps into that speed, it's a little bit better. Let's try a bit faster. Yep. So yeah, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. I think if I'm being perfectly honest, I was expecting a slightly better crawl out of it. But you can't deny that at this sort of speed, it is really, really smooth. Look at that. 
that's so so nice and smooth uh, it's just a pity it can't go slower <laughs> it really does just sort of conk out if you turn it any lower than that so that's not that impressive one thing though that has really impressed me is the pulling power i measured a tractive effort here of 0 0.96 newtons that is more than the Hornby Class 56, it's more than the Helgen Class 52. So for a reasonably small diesel, this has the pulling power of a much, much larger one. Yeah, really, really impressed with that. That should allow this thing to haul 53 coaches on straight and level track. And in order to help demonstrate that, I've set up quite a big and crucially quite a heavy goods train, mixed goods, all sorts of different wagons on there. And I'm actually really interested to see whether my reading is just faulty or whether this tiny little diesel on her own can manage such a chunky train. So let's set this into reverse. Yep, it already is. And let's give it some juice and try the coupling, shall we? Right, what do you reckon? Can she actually handle a ridiculous drive? I've not even counted the wagon. There's probably too many to easily count. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the biggest uh, sort of test trains I've ever set up. So. Without any further ado, let's start a gradual acceleration. Let's see if this little beast can handle such a train. Gordon's Hill will be the real test, but on the flat, it seems totally fine, doesn't it? God, look at this. It's acting like there's nothing coupled to it at all. <laughs> no funny business, look. I've not just decoupled half the train. It is all still there. Look at the state of that amazing so as you can see the pulling power is just absolutely immense i'm a bit confused as to why because the loco isn't particularly heavy it's got to be just the material of the wheels obviously they grip well to the track i don't understand it anyway on the middle line i have a double header of class 20s just to show their formation i suppose in real life these are the old lima ones i must say though even though they're not quite as good a runners they are quieter than the backman and they can probably hmm, no, I wouldn't say they can crawl better. They're not far off, though. <laughs> In fact, that grey one's doing better than the green one. The green one's jumping all over the place. But yeah, that's kind of how they would run in real life, probably with more matching liveries, though. And then on the inside line, to keep up with my sort of BR green diesel theme, I suppose besides that uh, grey class 20, I have the Backman class 25, I believe it is, yeah, 25 slash 0 or 1 or something, I forget now. But yeah, that's a nice runner. Anyway, there goes the Class 20 on its second lap. Let's catch up with that then. Let's watch it run. Enjoy the running session and see which other BR Green Diesels we can spot. So pity about the crawl, really. But the performance overall is pretty impressive, I would say. It's perfectly smooth at this speed. I just cannot believe the amount of power there. I would never have guessed that, honestly. There's the 25. Or the Rat, if you like. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really decent runner, actually. It's, it's not bad at all. Uh, I think when you think of what other locomotives were on the market back in 2003, and then picture this one among them, I think it must have been rather impressive. Obviously, these days, it's considerably less so, but obviously, Backman aren't making any secrets of that. And the fact that they are retooling this shows that they are willing, at least, to revisit their range and improve it. The, the new price, I mean, 189 that seems rather expensive for a Class 20. Yes, there's a lot of room for improvement on this model, but how much improvement would possibly justify such a massive increase in price? Well, I can't comment because I haven't actually seen their new model. If you'd like me to bite the bullet and pick one up, though, uh, do let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. And if enough people express an interest in that, I might actually order one. And we can find out for sure exactly what they're like. But this one is a definite step up from the Lima version. I'm reasonably happy with it. Yeah, it's not that detailed, but I wasn't really expecting it to be when I bought it. And the price I purchased it at was about right, wasn't it? Not too expensive. Yeah, reasonably pleased with this. Let's have some ratings then for the Backman Class 20. And to be honest with you, for a locomotive that dates back to 2003, it's more or less what you'd expect, isn't it? The level of detail, I think I've had to be reasonably harsh here and give it just two stars. Yeah, it loses quite a few marks. I mean, it's largely plastic construction. I mean, you've got the plastic grills as well as the plastic bodywork, so it loses a little bit for that. You've got the very basic cab detail, lots of moulded parts. You don't have any lights on this model. There's no fan beneath the grills. 
I suppose the one thing this Loco has got going for it is the livery that is at least done to a high standard, but yet it's showing its age and I can absolutely understand why Backman would want to retool their Class 20. The performance is okay though, I've given it four stars, I mean I don't knock off uh, any marks for the sound or the noise a locomotive makes, However, the slow speed isn't absolutely fantastic. It's far from awful, and it does do a reasonable crawl once you turn that controller just a little bit higher up. And it certainly doesn't do any slowing down or derailing around the track. So yeah, performance isn't bad at all. The pulling power is absolutely insane. 53 coaches, that beats the Hornby Class 56. That's even more than the Garrett, the Helgen Garrett. Can you believe that? I don't know what it is about this, because it's not particularly heavy must have uh, wheels with a high coefficient of friction between the wheels and the track, I guess. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but as you can see, it's kind of demonstrating by the load it's hauling how powerful it is. The mechanism I've had to give five star because I cannot fault the mechanism, despite the slightly funny noise it's making. And it's got all wheel drive, all wheel pickup, proper metal bearings on the wheel set, five pole motor, dual flywheels, does beg the question as to why the crawl isn't better. Perhaps the quality of the motor isn't what it ought to be. Can't really think of anything else that could be causing it. But yeah, the mechanism itself on paper is fantastic. So five stars. The quality I've given four stars. It does lose a point for the amount of plastic construction, yet it is a little bit on the plasticky side. But there are quite a few nice metal details and the thing is put together absolutely perfectly. I didn't find a glue mark. I didn't find any details dropping off. Yeah, it's really, really nicely put together. That brings us on to value for money then, which I've had to give three star. I mean, for such a basic model, the ROP of £140 doesn't make too much sense to me. Yes, it's got a great mechanism, but no lights? <laughs> that is a big bugbear, isn't it? For £140, you want locomotives with lights, if applicable. And this Class 20 certainly is applicable. The price I paid, though, the model centre, £87. Yeah, it's much more like it. It's not a bargain or anything, but it's more or less reasonable, I would say. So, yeah, three star there. Overall then, when you consider this loco is nearly 20 years old, the score of 7.11 out of 10 doesn't seem too bad. And there it goes into the logbook. Oh, look at that. It's above the new Hornby A2 slash 2 and below the Flying Scotsman. I think the reason it beats the A2 slash 2 is because of its quality. It was put together properly, which is more than can be said for the Hornby A2. So overall, not a bad locomotive at all. I'm reasonably impressed. So there you go then folks, yeah like I say the Class 20 is one of my favourite diesels, I just like old fashioned things and the Class 20s are pretty old fashioned as far as British diesels go so yeah I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Do let me know if you've got a Class 20 or if you've seen one run, are they just noisy like this by design or do I need to investigate this one or do I need to open it up and figure out what's causing the noise and try and fix it? Uh, if you know the answer to that particular question, do let me know down in the comments. But for now, I hope you enjoyed seeing that. If you're not familiar with the existing Backman Class 20, uh, I guess you are now, so we are better equipped to judge the new version when it comes out and I'm filming this uh, just after the announcement but I suppose by the time this video does go out the new Backman Class 20 might already be out I'm not 100% sure uh, if it is let me know in the comments what they're like the Sam filming this video does not know but maybe the Sam releasing the video might know I'm not sure but thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it as I say and I will see you for another review very very soon all right cheers folks you take care of yourselves